Alright guys, oh, I'm just trying to get comfy. Uh, welcome back to another video. Um, this is going to be another one of the sort of sustainability chats, which I've made my last couple of videos have been on. So if you're new to the channel, click subscribe uh, for more content similar to this. If you're interested in, in how you can reduce your personal footprint on the environment is essentially what these videos are about. Today I wanted to talk about carbon offsetting. So carbon offsetting is essentially um, funding projects that mitigate carbon use, CO2 use and emissions in other parts of the world in order to mitigate my personal carbon footprint here in Australia. So this can include funding projects that reduce or, or increase uh, renewable energy uses across the world, particularly in the third world and developing countries. And the reason why I want to talk about this today is because I've just booked a flight to the UK. I'm flying to London next January to see family and friends and I booked through Qantas. And Qantas, at the end of the booking, asked me if I wanted to make my flight carbon neutral. And it was going to cost about $45 and I couldn't really believe that I could reduce my, I could negate the CO2 usage from that flight, little tiger moth, from that flight with as little as $45. To me, it just seemed ridiculous, especially considering in one of the previous videos I made called Three Ways to Reduce Your Carbon Footprint, I looked at diet. One of the things I looked at in that video was if you go from a meat eating diet to a vegan diet, you can save about 1200 kilos of CO2 entering the atmosphere in one year. So I looked at this flight a calculator on the website. Here we are. The website was the International Civil Aviation Organization. These are a governing body essentially for global aviation and inputted my flight details, where I was stopping over, what planes I would fly on, and it pumped out about 1,700 kilos of CO2. So in one flight, versus a year of veganism, I'm, even at, I'm producing 500 kilos more CO2 by flying than I am by eating vegan for a year. So how could Qantas charge me $45 to make this flight carbon neutral? It just seemed ridiculous. So I did some digging and it actually seems that Qantas is one of the better airlines, if not best airlines for carbon offsetting. They've got a future planet goal by 2050 to be completely uh, zero emissions. And there's a few other things they're doing. They're matching the $45 that I could have spent with Qantas. They're matching that and then they're investing that or donating that to charities and organizations that are mitigating climate change. They're also investing um, $50 million in the next 10 years in order to develop a sustainable aviation fuel industry. Last year, 2018, they had the first dedicated biofuel flight from the US to Australia. This year, 2019, they operated the world's first zero waste flight. And in 2020, they want to cap their net emissions and they want to eliminate 100 million single-use plastics and then as I said by 2050 they want to have zero net emissions which is really cool um, so they've got apparently the they're the largest airline offsetter and they even offset their own personal staff travel so the projects that they fund are essentially made governed by a uh, government agency here in Australia called the National Carbon Offset Standard and we'll go into that a bit later. First, I want to talk about, there seems a question when I was researching on whether it's moral for a airline to offer customers the ability to offset their emissions from that flight based on the fact that I can pollute by flying and then I can just pay someone to make that problem disappear. It's not actually changing any of my habits, my travel habits, I'm not trying to, they're not forcing me to fly less or to fly shorter distances. So in my opinion, it is a good idea to be offsetting your travel, having had a look. So that to me is a little bit silly 
because you can change your habits in other ways to reduce your carbon footprint. A few things with flying is having a stopover versus a direct flight produces more CO2 and flying economy also produces the least amount of CO2 because there's less passengers per square inch of the flight in business or first class. So if you want to reduce your footprint to start with by flying, fly direct if you can and fly economy as well. And what you want to look at when you are, when Qantas are offering various offset projects is you need to look at what the projects are they're funding. So do a bit of personal research. You need to see how much percentage of money that you donate goes to admin costs and whether, they're cert whether the schemes are certified. And in this example, there's gold certification, gold standard, sorry, or carbon standard certification. There's a few others as well, other funds called Atmosphere, My Climate, Climate Care, and TerraPass, which are based sort of around the world. And, but the Environmental Consumer Group uh, advises that you shouldn't let a business or a company select where your carbon offsetting goes, that you're better off picking an individual project. And they also recommend choosing projects that are investing in energy as opposed to reforestation because you never know what's going to happen to that forest if it has been replanted. Whereas increasing en energy technologies and efficiencies, you're probably better off in the long run than you are supporting forestry. So if you are looking at offsetting, look more towards wind and solar and biomass fuels as opposed to reforestation. So I had another, just keep looking again and then came across Gold Standard. Now Gold Standard is a NGO uh, designed or built upon funding projects around the world that allow carbon offsetting. And this is pulled direct from their website. This is goldstandard.org. I'll put a link in the description below. But standards have been set up to provide assurances to buyers that the emission reduction generated by a particular project are indeed real, quantifiable and additional. Credible standards provide high quality, independent, verified assessments of the emission reductions produced by a project. The gold standard goes one step further and ensures that all its projects meet robust and stringent methodology requirements for sustainable development in that local area. To ensure the purchases of high quality carbon offsets, it is imperative that companies pursue offsets that have been subjected to rigorous third party monitoring, reporting and verification procedures. It is also useful to source carbon credits from a reputable offset supplier who can offer transparency in terms of the project's pricing and the retirement of carbon credits, which is what Gold Standard does. And Gold Standard is recognised by carbon market and climate change politics scholars as the prime instance of a group of voluntary standards. So what does this mean? So essentially this means that Qantas's projects that they're funding have not necessarily gone through the more rigorous standing that gold standard projects go through. And the, what's the word? The, the standards set that Qantas are following are dictated by the Australian government. I typically am not a fan of the Australian government. They don't seem to regard climate change as a serious issue. So I'm gonna look to funding projects with rigorous standards that are set by an NGO. Obviously the government could be taking money from any donations or anything through their national carbon offset standard. I don't know. It's actually really, really hard to, to figure out the standards set by them. So what am I going to do? I was looking through the gold standard website and if you have a scroll, you can basically pick and select projects that interest you and they start at about 15 Aussie dollars for 1,000 1, kilos of CO2. So for my flight, 1,700. Yeah, I need to be looking at two, uh, two carbon credits, so 2,000 um, 2, CO2 uh, kilos of CO2 in order to offset my flight. And yeah, you can just have a scroll through and you can look through everything they've got on the website and it does seem really good it's quick and easy and it actually works out cheaper to do it that way than it does through Qantas so that's pretty much it guys I found it really interesting uh, I haven't really dug into this before so it's always good to, to keep sort of figuring 
how I can reduce my footprint. The best thing about gold standard as well is it doesn't have to be related to a flight. It can be related to anything in your life. You can just set up a monthly thing where you just reduce your emissions essentially by saving emissions somewhere else in the world. If you're driving to Townsville, a friend of mine's driving to Townsville and he was asking me about offsetting his fuel use in order to get to Townsville. So Ben, if you are watching, have a look at Gold Standard website. You can offset, I imagine, less than the drive for about 15 Aussie dollars or 10 US dollars. So guys, have a look. As I said, I'll put some links down below that you can follow if you are interested in this. If you do have any questions, please ask me in the comments. If you've got any other topics you want me to talk about, then please let me know in the comments. If you found this video interesting, please give it a like, share it around with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.